grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I, uh, I want to start this morning by telling you a little story about uh, our trip to Haiti. While we were, uh, I didn't realize this was going to be our gospel reading for today until, well, about a week ago after coming back from Haiti for a couple days. Um, but here we had a little experience of a storm while we were there. Um, let me give you a little background um, so that you so that you understand why I was on a fishing boat in Haiti. Um, we were working with Jacob's Well in Haiti, and uh, Mark Thornton is the executive director of Jacob's Well, and uh, he takes on his time in Haiti in a very kind of a unique, wonderful way. Um, that instead of being another mission agency that is providing some funding from kind of the top down, uh, he instead has a ministry of really relationships. And, and there's a series of micro loans that are being done. It's kind of a nice way of saying a very small loan. Uh, small loans that were done over a period of time to small businessmen and women so that they would have a sustainable way to care for themselves. They don't need to be looking for missionaries to come and give them dollars when they have an opportunity to have a, a vocation, a job, work, an opportunity for them to continue on in their own personal ministry. And so uh, there was a group of three fishermen that their boat was no longer usable for them. They'd been fishermen for many years. Uh, so Mark purchased a boat. And in return for their use of that boat, uh, then they come while he's there and they bring him uh, some lobster, some crab, some things that they catch in their nets. Um, they also then use their daily catch to, to slowly pay him back. And, uh, it's a great opportunity for him to continue in this ministry of helping others and to build this relationship with this group of fishermen who now have become very dear friends of his. And, and so while he has company down there and we were visiting him, uh, they also offered to take us on what they called a little pleasure cruise uh, during the evening. And so we, we headed over there the night before we were planning to leave. And, um, and there's, what, there's five of us. So there's myself and Chris um, and a guy named Monty and Mark and his dad, Bill. Now, Mark and Bill are pretty big guys. And so I didn't know what this boat was going to look like until we got there. And we got there and, and um, uh, Mark, we thought, was making a joke and said, well, there she is. And uh, there she was. It's um, <laughs> as a probably eight, maybe ten foot, right, fishing boat that looks like it had been in service for many, 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 many years. Uh, a wooden boat um, with all kinds of, I mean, some beautiful painting on the side like a Haitian fishing boat should be. Um, painted on the inside with like a tar or uh, something to help it to be more uh, seaworthy. Um, but like I said, it was a wooden structure, a wooden boat made out of planks. So when we first got in, um, water was bubbling up about that high, right between my feet, right as soon as we got in. Um, the Haitian guy said, no, this is good because it helps um, distribute the weight more properly. You know, the boat gets filled with a little water, gives it a nice low center of gravity. They didn't explain it quite in that way, but that's the way I understood it um, and believed it to be. Now, Mark and Bill are pretty big guys, and so when they first got in, they positioned them towards the front, but it wasn't going to work because the motor was kind of uh, almost out of the water. So then they repositioned them. And we got all situated where we all needed to be. So now there's seven of us in this boat, um, which by Haitian standards could probably hold a few more, but not by ours. And so we headed out. Max is our captain. He's the leader. And uh, he's got uh, his helper. I can't remember his name. A young guy. Um, great guy. Anyway, we head off and we start heading up. Um, north. We're going to go along the shoreline, and so they're pointing out some sights to see along the way, and it's beautiful, especially because it's been so hot in Haiti. Now we got a little bit of salt uh, mist as we're hitting some waves, and we got some cool air coming, and we're out on the water. We're not worried about the bugs getting us. What a beautiful uh, it's a pleasure cruise, just like they said. And uh, we get a little ways away, and somebody notices behind us um, some angry clouds coming over the mountains behind us. And, and we laugh, you know, hey, we're from Nebraska. We're used to thunderstorms coming up. It's not a big deal. And, um, but then they, they started looking like really angry. 
and, uh, and we could see the wall of rain starting to come across. And at first, Max was saying, um, well, we won't get wet. We'll, we're okay. And then pretty soon, you could see the concern on his face. And he says, we're just going to get a little wet. Uh, and, then, and then he decides, well, we need to turn around. And so about the time we start turning around, we feel a cold breeze hit us, uh, which felt really good because we are in Haiti. But it didn't feel so very good because there's a cold breeze, there's this front, and now it's starting to really go. The wind is starting to come, the waves are getting higher. We've turned around, we're making our way back. We can't go too fast. It's a borrowed motor. Um, it's shared between a couple other boats. We had a really hard time getting it started. And uh, so we're thankful for it, but they're pacing themselves, coming back. Uh, the waves are coming. Uh, Max is bailing water, and, and we're okay, right? get a little wet. Well, then the lightning started striking. And, um, and no joke, right? So the light, lightning is starting to hit in various places, and we're still kind of smiling. Ah, we're fine. Bill's not smiling anymore at all. Um, he's praying, and, and, and he's saying, um, um, you remember that reading where Jesus is sleeping in the boat, and Jesus says, be still, be quiet. Jake, can you, can you calm these waters? And, um, he made some other comments when he got back, too, but I can't repeat them. Um, he, uh, um, well, then a lightning strike right, kind of, it was kind of right in front of the boat, right? It's one of those that I was looking the other way, but the flash of light was like, whoa, where was that? And, and um, you know, Mark was sitting there, and he's saying how he was bracing for impact, and, and, um, and, we're, I know, Max was in charge, our Haitian guy, and he's doing really well, so we're getting close, and now we can start to see the place where we're going to stop, where we're going to get out, and we're almost there, it's in sight, and then in a flash, we see a bit of a fishing net appear. They cut the motor, they swerve really hard to the left in order to keep the net from getting caught in the prop, um, and now we're drifting. And we're getting close to shore, which was a good thing, but we're heading really fast towards the shore, and there's rocks there. So he, you know, jumps over these other six guys, stops us from hitting the rocks. Um, anyway, I could go on. We made it back, which was good, right? We made it back safely to shore. We all bailed out as quick as we could. We got to the truck, and we, and we made it back home. I guess the point of the story is even when there's faithful people involved, Sometimes God does not calm the storm. It's just true, right? Sometimes God does not calm the storm. Uh, I know Bill was pretty earnestly. I know he is a faithful man. Uh, but sometimes God just simply does not calm the waves. He does not stop the wind from blowing. Sometimes it just, uh, it's just difficult. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at this whole idea of real faith in the real world. And we've talked about a family of faith. We've talked about a, a growing faith. And we need to spend a couple minutes today talking about what it means to have true faith, real faith, in the midst of, of stormy times. But in order to begin properly, we have to understand what this reading really means. Uh, because I've heard it preached in a pretty strange way before. Maybe you have too. I've heard it taught in a way that, um, that turns it into an allegory. Right, you understand what an allegory is, right? It's a story that is told that means something entirely different. Right? And so sometimes you can hear this preached and it talks like this. Uh, uh, the preacher might say, um, you know, the storms of your life. Have faith, pray, and God will calm the storms of your life. Well, this is not an allegory. Right? It, it, that's wrong. That's a wrong reading. That's a, that's a misstatement of, of what the intent of this reading is to be. Right? Because it's not a matter of you having more faith or you praying a little bit harder. And if you pray hard enough or if you have enough faith, God will calm the storms of your life. No, it's just simply not true. There's sometimes some storms, some difficulties, some hardships that just simply remain. And because they remain doesn't mean that you lack faith. And because they remain doesn't mean that you haven't prayed quite hard enough. Let me give you a couple of examples, right? See, right now, here this morning, there's probably a few of you that have come into worship this morning and you're going through something of a storm right now. It's a hard time, it's a difficulty. Maybe it, maybe it has to do with a storm of, 
of illness. And your life consists of doctor visits and doctor bills and maybe an impending surgery coming. And, and, and it feels to you maybe like Jesus is sleeping. And you cry out to him and you say, uh, God, don't you know? Don't you know what I'm going through? And yet, even in the midst of that storm, you look to the one who calls out to the waves and says, stop, be silent. You see, this is, this is how the story really goes. It really happened. It really happened on a particular day where Jesus and his disciples were heading out across a large lake. It really happened that a real storm came up with real waves and real wind. And they really thought that they were really going to drown. And, and this real Jesus was really sleeping, as surprising as that might sound. And they called out to him and they said, uh, aren't you afraid, or we're afraid that we're going to drown. And Jesus really said these words. This is not an allegorical story. It's not just a parable to mean something else. Jesus really said, silent, be still. And those real waves stopped. That real wind, it was silent. Because he is not just a man. Right? They said, what kind of man is this that the wind and the waves obey him? It's because he's not just a man. He is a man indeed, but he's truly God. He's really God. He's the one who made the sun and the moon and the stars. He's the one that made the waves. He made the wind. And so, of course, he could say, silent, be still, and it would obey. This is the real God that gives us comfort, even in the midst of storms. See, maybe you're sitting here this morning and it's not illness or, or health that has caused a storm in your life. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a storm of, of relationship. Maybe it's your marriage that is struggling right now and you don't know what to do about it. Or maybe it's the relationship that you have with your, with your children. Maybe it's a, a difficult relationship with your father. Maybe it's a difficult relationship with your grandchildren or your parents. And it's a real storm that's happening, and you feel like Jesus is sleeping, and you say, uh, don't you care, Jesus, of the pain that we're going through? And yet you trust in the one who can make the wind and the waves obey. Or maybe the storm that you're enduring has nothing to do with health, and maybe it doesn't have anything to do with relationships. Maybe you're going through a financial storm, and you don't know what you're going to do, and it feels like Jesus is sleeping, and you say, uh, God, do you understand? Don't you know I'm suffering here? And yet, even in the midst of that storm, too, you can trust in the one whom even the wind and the waves obey. See, in the midst of storms that we're going through, we have to remember, uh, really remember who we are, and then really remember who he really is. First, we remember who we are. We are sinful. We have sinful flesh. We live in a sin-filled world. And sometimes difficult, terrible things happen. You just have to turn on the news over the last couple of days, and you can see that terrible things happen, even among the people of God, even to faith-filled people. And it doesn't point to a, a lack of faith on their part. It doesn't necessarily point to a lack of prayer. But in the midst of that storm, in the midst of that difficulty, in the midst of that hardship, we look to the one. We look to the one who really is the Messiah. So we not only remember who we are, but we remember who he is. Not just a mere man, but the God of creation who took on flesh God incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ, the one who has come that can make everything obey. And he promises you that even though you're going through a storm, he has already endured the worst storm of all on your behalf. We witnessed it this morning. Little Emmett was baptized in the first service. And even though it didn't appear to be, Emmett was going through the greatest storm ever known. He was born like you and me in sin, suffers from that sinful flesh, living in a sin-filled world. And yet through water and the word, God joined Emmett to his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in that, he was joined to the perfect life, the sacrificial death, and the glorious resurrection of Jesus. Jesus went through the worst storm of all, facing the storm of, of being banished, sent away, turned away from by his heavenly Father. He's gone through that for you too. And those of you that were baptized have gone through that storm as well. 
Those of you who are not yet baptized, God's inviting you to go through that storm. But it's one that Jesus would endure on your behalf. So let the storms come. They're going to come anyway. Yeah, we fight against them. We might run from them. But the storms are going to come anyway. Difficulty, hardship, because remember who you are. Remember who we are. We are sin-filled people living in a sin-filled world full of danger and difficulty. But we also, in the midst of it, remember who he is. Just like the disciples were reminded a long time ago, just like we are reminded today, we're not just following a mere man. We're not just following Jesus because he was such a great example. We are baptized followers of Jesus. We are his disciples. He is God incarnate, the Messiah. The one who even the wind and the waves obey. The one whom your sin obeys. You've been washed clean of sin. You are forgiven of all of your sins. And you have heaven awaiting. So let the storms come. And we will continue to have a real faith. Real faith in a real Savior. Even in the midst of real storms. Amen.